when you're working with non-geographic data sets, sometimes you have multiple files that you want to combine. Maybe a spreadsheet of zip codes and crime rates, and another spreadsheet of zip codes and income. With pandas, you can say, hey, your zip codes and crime rates, and your zip codes and income, you have a zip code column in common. Let's combine those data sets. And there you go. You have a brand new data set with zip codes and crime rates and income. This is called a column join. When you have geographic data sets, you can actually do the same thing, but you don't even need your data sets to have a column in common. They just have to share the same space. This is called a spatial join. For example, if you have a bunch of restaurant locations, you can join them with the neighborhoods that they're in. You can join roads with the cities they cross or countries with their shipping ports. Find the average test scores in the school district or the pollution levels around power plants. With the spatial join, you can combine anything with the physical location to anything else with a physical location. It's super powerful, but can also be a little confusing. So let's spend a little time picking apart the way spatial joins work in pandas, in geopandas specifically. We'll make a few steps to this. So a handful of concepts are related to the spatial join, but right now we're talking specifically about the analog of the column join. So in a column join, you take data from one data set and add it to another data set. So data set A plus data set B based on a common column. So for example, we talked before, you have a zip code and a crime rate, and then you have a zip code and a crime rate attached to an income level for that zip code. So you get data set AB, everything kind of added together. In a spatial join, it's the same thing. So you take data set A that's spatial, you take data set B that's spatial, that, based on space or geographic relationship. So same thing. It's important to remember that because you might get it confused later on with a few other spatial relationships. So just think, data set A, data set B, based on a geographic relationship, you are going to combine them. So for example, if you had you used to have a power plant as data set A, and then you had a bunch of states as data set B, if you combine them, you would then have a power plant that also had the data of the state that it's in. So maybe the name, the population, things like that. So the most basic version of a spatial join, the most common version of a spatial join, is taking several points and finding out what they're inside of. What states are these power plants in? What neighborhoods are these art galleries in? So I have read in two geodata frames. One is called states and one is called plants. States is, of course, a bunch of states. Plants is a bunch of power plants. So we see that the states have a polygon as their geometry, they're a shape, and then the plants have a point as their geometry. So they are actually locations. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all of our power plants and attach the data from the states that they are inside of. So plants with states equals gpd.sjoin plants states how equals inner op equals within and then we'll look at it so let's go through this oh no our crs doesn't match this is the most important thing i'm glad i didn't automatically do this before we started so as we've talked about before, when you have a CRS, a coordinate reference system, you have to make sure that your CRSs match. You have to make sure that 
one set of data is making the same assumptions about the Earth as the other set of data. So let's look at these two CRSs. This one is EPSG 4326, a basic latitude and longitude. Our states is EPSG 4269, so slightly different here. So what we want to do is convert these to be the same CRS. And the way we're going to do that is dot to CRS. It doesn't matter which one we choose to change the CRS of. We could change the plants to match the states or the states to match the power plants. It's the same. The way we're going to do this is we're going to say, hey states, I want you to change your CRS do a conversion from your old CRS to this new CRS. Change it to be the same as the plants. In place equals true means edit the CRS so we don't have to worry about it anymore. So after we change it, run this, then we do states.crs, you'll see that they now match incredibly important every single time you do geographic comparisons you need to make sure your CRS's are the same. Let's try this again. Okay, wonderful. Now let's go through it piece by piece. gpd.sjoin. So we're saying, hey geopandas, it's time for a spatial join. And then we give it the two things we want to join together, the power plants and the states. The order here is very, very important, kind of, depending upon what you're doing. But you should always think about the order. The thing that's first is the ge geometry that we're keeping. Since power plants are first, we're keeping all of the points for the power plants this geometry right here for the power plants. If states were first, we would be keeping this geometry here, each one of these shapes in the join. How is our next one? Is a technical term for the kind of join we're doing. You might know about this if you've learned SQL, but the two basic ones you'll need to know about are left and inner. Left means keep all of the power plants even if they don't have a matching state. An inner means if a power plant doesn't have a state, get rid of it. In this case, if one of these power plants seems to not be in a state, if it's overseas or in the middle of the ocean, we're going to get rid of it. And then finally, we have OP equals within. This is our operation. As you might have guessed, we're looking for power plants that are within a state. So within is the way that you say something is inside of something else. So one more time, piece by piece. Geopandas, we want to make a spatial join. We're joining power plants to states. We want to find, keep the locations of the power plant, so we're putting that first. We don't care about the state shape, so we're putting that second. Then for how, if a power plant isn't in one of our states, we want to get rid of it. And then finally, within is our geographic relationship. We're looking to find power plants that are within states. And there we go. Now we have our result. It's all of the power plant data, but now you see that it has new columns. If we look at the original power plants, we see it has one, two, three, four columns. Geometry, megawatts, plant, and source. And if we look at our new data frame, our spatially joined data frame, it has geometry, megawatts, plant, and source. If we look at our states data frame, states comes with geometry, name, and population. Because we have states as second, we throw that geometry away and we keep everything else. We keep the name and the population. So here we go with name and population. 
It's also giving us this nice little index here in case we want to refer back to our original data frame. But mostly, just think of it as taking all of the columns of the power plants and then matching it up with the columns from the state's data frame. So is your power plant in Alabama spatially? Is it inside of the shape of Alabama? You now have the name of Alabama. You now have the population of Alabama. Is your power plant inside of the shape of California? You now have everything from California attached to you. We just have name and population, but it could also be many more columns. If you want to confirm this, I'm going to go down here. I'm going to do head to. If we look at plants with states and we do a dot shape, we see that it has 7,410 rows. If we just look at plants again, 7,610 rows and four columns. What happened? Why is there a difference here? Why is there a 200 power plant difference between plants joined with shapes and our normal plants? Well, when we did our join, our how was inner. We said we only want power plants that come with a state. If you do not have a state, we're going to get rid of you. If we run this again and we change our how to left, you'll see that if we do left and we don't get rid of all of those extra data frames, or if we don't get rid of all of those extra rows, we're now at 7610. Because we said, you know what? If you're a power plant that doesn't have a state, that's fine with me. So now that we have all of these extra columns in our data set, we can actually do some kind of unexpected things with it. So for example, if we wanted to know how many power plants were in each state, every single one of these rows now has the name of the state attached to it. So all we need to do is grab our new geo data frame and say, hey, what's the value counts for the name column? And then it'll say there are about 1,200 power plants in California, 460 in North Carolina, so on and so forth. Pretty fun, right? The number of times Michigan shows up, the number of times Iowa shows up, so on and so forth. You would think that if you wanted to know how many power plants were in each state, you'd need to join everything to the states. You would need to put states here, plants here, keep the geometry of the states, blah, blah, blah. No, it's not true. By having a list of power plants where each power plant has a state name attached, you can easily count it with value counts. There are a few ways that things are different. We'll talk about that more later on when we talk about left joins versus inner joins. But for the basics, all you need to do is a join like this between your points and your polygons. We could also take this and say, how many, let's say, coal power plants are in each state? So right now we're saying, hey, count the number of times each state name appears. But I could easily say, instead of looking at every power plant, let's look at your source and make sure your source is coal. So we filter it and then do a value counts there. So Pennsylvania comes in first with 24, then Illinois, Texas, so on and so forth. The one thing we can't do right now is use this data to make a colored map called a choropleth. If we want to take this and make it geographic and say California has a lot, so it's very green, and Rhode Island has very fewer, so it's a lighter color, we can't do that yet. It'll take a few more steps, but 
we'll get there. And in terms of analysis, the spatial drawing that we've done right now has really put us in a really good place. We can do a lot of different kinds of analysis like this. But in order to make that core pleth, you're going to have to wait just a little bit longer.